What's going on everybody? As some of you may know, I recently had knee surgery and over the last four weeks or so, I've been recovering and I haven't been making videos because I can't really walk around and move things in my office so I can record. But what I was able to do was work on my niche website and start building out my new niche website. And while I wanted to build out a new niche website that used maybe a more modern stack or something other than WordPress, I kept going back to WordPress, which made me think maybe I was wrong for telling people not to learn WordPress if they're trying to learn how to code and become web developers. So I thought I should make a video highlighting some of the reasons why you maybe should learn WordPress or think about learning WordPress or why learning WordPress if you're trying to become a self-taught web developer isn't necessarily a bad thing or a waste of time. Before we get into that, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Hostinger. Before endorsing Hostinger, I wanted to make sure that I tried out their product first, so I asked them to set me up with an account. And after they provided me with a free account, I went ahead and set up hosting for my new niche website on there, and I also decided to transfer over my other niche website. Hostinger has a bunch of different hosting packages and options. They have shared hosting, which is great for small businesses or someone who might be learning how to code and wants to play around with WordPress. They have cloud hosting options. I personally decided to go with the professional cloud package. They also offer virtual private servers and you can even host your Minecraft server on Hostinger. They have really good documentation, a YouTube channel, and their H panel is really simple and easy to use. So thanks again to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. If you want to sign up for web hosting with Hostinger, make Make sure you use the link that I'm going to provide down in the description below. That's going to be hostinger.com slash Dorian Develops. And if you use the promo code Dorian Develops, you can get up to 91% off on all yearly plans. So make sure you don't forget to use that code. All right, let's get into all the reasons why you actually should learn WordPress if you're learning how to code and want to become a web developer. One of the first things that I think I should mention about WordPress is that it's fairly easy to use. And a lot of people will tell you this. You can spin up a WordPress site with one click install on most hosting platforms. And with that being said, if you're new to learning how to code, if you're just getting started, if you want to just create a website for the sake of creating a website, if you need to set up a website for a small business, if you're just starting to take on clients, if you just want something that works and is quick to install and doesn't take a lot of technical know-how to get up and running, WordPress is is that. And the way that that can benefit you as someone who is learning how to code and trying to become a self-taught web developer is that it will give you an easy way into playing around with a website and getting one up and running and live and setting up a domain name and just going through that whole process has a lot of benefit. So if you're just getting started and you want to put up a website quick and easy, WordPress is the way to do it. And once that's up, you can go in there and try to change some things with CSS. You can start playing around with WordPress and learn how to install themes, how to install plugins, how to use the WYSIWYG and the text editor, how to add images, and all sorts of things that don't require a whole bunch of programming or coding knowledge. So if you want to get your hands a little dirty and you want to go break some stuff and you want to mess around with a website, that's a really good way to do it when you're first getting started. And I remember doing that. And I had a lot of little WordPress websites that I created when I was learning how to code. And I showed them on my portfolio for a while until I had enough stuff that I didn't need to but that's another great benefit about building WordPress sites. And while that may not land you the dream software engineer job because you have a bunch of WordPress sites on your portfolio, having a few sites that you actually built for clients or that you built for fun that look like professional sites and are built on WordPress is fine when you're starting to build out that portfolio. And that leads me into the next thing. WordPress developer jobs don't pay too bad, but since a lot of people work in WordPress, it does tend to saturate the market. Here is where specializing and becoming really good at something will always make you money and will always separate you from the rest of the people. If all you know how to do is install a WordPress site and install a theme and put some text and images into a post and maybe move a few things around with CSS, you're probably not gonna make a ton of money. If you wanna make real money, you're gonna have to learn how to code. It's not gonna be enough to learn how to use a WYSIWYG and drag and drop. Do it! Drag and drop! Well, but I drag and drop! But if you decide to specialize into WordPress and you really want to like take a deep dive and you want to understand how to build custom themes and how to build plugins, you can get paid because all of that stuff requires you 
understanding how to code, all of that stuff is gonna require PHP and JavaScript and jQuery. That's what makes the difference between a person who is a WordPress developer that goes in and does what most people can do with just a little bit of technical know-how versus someone who really knows how WordPress works and really understands the stack. That leads me to the next thing, why I think that WordPress isn't actually so bad to learn when you're learning how to code. WordPress is actually a legit stack. You may have heard of LAMP or WAMP or MAMP, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, Windows, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Mac, Apache, MySQL, PHP. With it being a stack of technologies, you have to understand how to make those things run on your local environment. When you do this, you're gonna learn how to set up a server locally on your computer, you're gonna learn about databases, and you're gonna learn about how server-side languages interact with the server and the database. This stack also works with different programming languages, such as Perl and Python. That right there will bring you a lot of value in the future. And I got to thinking about all this recently because I decided to build my new website on WordPress instead of a you know nice sparkly shiny new stack or making it a headless CMS. And that's what leads me to the next thing is that with learning WordPress as a self-taught developer, as someone who's just starting out and learning how to code, if you build a site on WordPress, you can always use it as a headless CMS. If you're not familiar with what a headless CMS is, a headless CMS is where you take a content management system like WordPress and you just use it as a backend to store your site's data like blog posts and images, and then you use a front-end framework like Gatsby or Next.js to handle all the front-end stuff by consuming the API from your content management system. And while I was thinking about all the different ways that I can build out my new blog, I kept going back to using the headless CMS. And at one point I was looking at using Ghost, which is a different CMS that's built on Node.js. And I almost pulled the trigger on building my new learn to code blog on Ghost. And I didn't do it because there was a lot of extra stuff that was gonna go into making it a headless CMS where I was gonna have to basically deal with a lot of the SEO stuff manually because I couldn't just magically have all the SEO stuff work. And that's when I was just like, you know, what if I want to make this a headless CMS I have that option with WordPress but for now I just want to get this site up and running I want to get it ranking on Google because I'm putting a lot of effort and money into this new website and I just want it to work and then still have the option to maybe have some fun with it later and do some headless CMS or whatever I want to do with it I know that WordPress would be able to do that. The next point is that WordPress has been around for a long time. WordPress is open source. WordPress has a ton of documentation. It has a ton of content creators who have courses and videos and blogs and everything you need to figure out how to get stuff done in WordPress. You can probably Google anything you need about WordPress and you will find a solution to whatever it is you're trying to solve. So that makes it really nice to work with because there's nothing worse than trying to figure something out and not being able to find anything on the problem that you're having with it. And with WordPress, that's not the case because of how long it's been around and how many people use it. And since WordPress is so widely used, chances are you're gonna have to touch WordPress eventually. I forget the exact number, like over 400 million websites are built on WordPress. It has a dominant presence on the internet. So when you do go out looking for freelancing work, while it may be hard when you're first starting out and don't have experience and it's hard to find the jobs and people might not hire you, or if they do, you're not gonna make a lot of money. Eventually, if you build up a portfolio of clients and work, you can make money with it because there's so many companies and small businesses and people who want WordPress sites or need someone who knows how to work on their existing WordPress site that there's gonna be plenty of work out there. And that just means that it can help you start making money sooner when you're learning how to code because of the amount of work that's gonna be out there. I'm not telling you you're gonna make a ton of money because I honestly don't know if you will when you're first starting out. I know that there's freelancers out there who do well with WordPress and who make a good living building WordPress sites and fixing WordPress sites and just kind of doing a lot of WordPress work because it's so widely used. So that right there is another good reason why you should learn WordPress. All right. I think that covers it all. I think I've said about as much as I wanted to say in this video. I know in the past I've said some bad things about WordPress and I apologize for telling people to not learn WordPress because 
really go learn whatever you want to learn that keeps you interested in learning and go learn whatever you think might help you get a job. With all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.